Rich and lovely people of freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Yep. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because it is Jesus. <laughs> I've come to Jesus. I've come to preach. It's Jesus I've come to talk about. God bless you, sir. The name of Jesus Christ is a wonderful name. The name of Jesus is full of hope. I know every one of us, every now and again, we mention the name of Jesus. But we mention the name of, the name of Jesus when we swear, when we cross. That's where we'll ever see his power. When we get in trouble. And we're trying to reach out to God for, for, for God's help. You can't use the name of Jesus Christ in swearing and cursing. And then when you're in trouble, you're trying to call on the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. That's not going to work. The people who You're looking for God's help. When Moses clearly said, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Because there's a person behind the name. This person is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Oh yes, he is. <laughs> this is the Jesus who came to die on the cross for you and me. This is the Jesus who came to give his life for us. This is the Jesus Christ who gave his life to deliver us from the present evil world. This world is evil, and this world will put a tear in your eye. It don't matter how hard you are, it don't matter how educated you are, it don't matter how rich you are. This world has a way of getting to everybody and put a tear in your eye. Because this world is under the sway of the devil. Let me explain. When God made man, he put him in the garden of Eden, and man was free. He was free from disease, he was free from death, he was free from sickness, he was free from stress, he was free from family problems. Man was free from any kind of bondage you can ever think of. And as you know, with every family, you have to have boundaries. Every family has to have trust and boundaries. Every relationship needs to have trust and boundaries. So in the Garden of Eden, God says to man, in order for our relationship to work, we need to establish trust, we need to establish boundaries. So, any tree in the Garden of Eden you're free to eat. And there are many trees and many fruits. The tree of life, you're free to eat. Any other tree, you're free to eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat it because the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, Adam had never seen a man die. 
So why didn't Adam ask what God meant by dying? Because I can guarantee you that the human definition of death is not the same as God's definition of death. When human beings are defining death, they are defining being put in the grave six feet down under there. But when God is defining death, he's talking about total separation from him in hell. That's God's definition of death. Because there are some born again Christians who died in Jesus, who are in heaven in the presence of God for eternity. They are not dead. They've just changed the dress. They are not dead. They are alive in the presence of God in heaven. So the human definition of death is not as the same as God's definition of death. When you're talking about death, you're talking about being buried in the ground. When God is talking about death, he's talking about total separation from him in hell. Adam had never seen a person die. So how did he know what death meant? Adam should have asked. Because when Adam decided to violate the family boundaries and mistrust God, you know that that was an action of a man who didn't know what God meant when he said, you will surely die. Because if Adam knew that God was referring to death, Adam would never have taken of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So the serpent comes in, lies to Adam and Eve, makes Adam and Eve believe that they can live their lives outside of God. Adam and Eve began to mistrust the words of Jesus Christ. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and straight away the relationship died. Because nobody is ever going to be in a relationship with a person who doesn't trust them. This is why you see people hacking into each other's Facebooks. This is why you see girlfriends going after their boyfriend's email and telephone records because of suspicions and paranoia. And it's the same thing with God and humanity. The day Adam and Eve stopped to trust the words of Jesus Christ, the relationship died, they cut themselves away from God and they died in the spirit. Because you see, the God that made human beings is, a, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is three in one. Is the Trinity. Humanity is also, as a person, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. I you live in a body. You were made in the image of God. The reason why you you grieve over broken relationships is because God is love. The reason why you grieve when you lose the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. The reason why you grieve when you lose loved ones. The reason why you you cry when you're broken-hearted. The blessing. Okay. Can I do this? Is that okay? Okay. Thank you so blessing. much. The blessing. Do you remember your first heartbreak? Do you remember that first heartbreak? Oh, you cried yourself to sleep. It's because when you lose relationships, it grieves you. Because God is love. You are made in the image of God. So when Adam and Eve moved away from trusting the words of Jesus, they died in the spirit, totally died in the spirit, and they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Now, you were in Adam when all of this was happening. So when Adam died in the spirit, he also died in the spirit. When Adam was sent out of the Garden of Eden, he was also sent out of the Garden of Eden. When Jesus came to put the relationship right, he came to put that relationship right on your behalf as well. The death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection was for you. The price that was paid on that cross there in Jerusalem was for you. The price that Jesus paid on Calvary was for you. 
when Jesus was hanging on that cross for those six hours, it was God in Jesus Christ reconciling the world to himself. Don't stop nothing but love for you. And God loves you so much. He sent Jesus to die for you. Now you might be walking past and say, I don't need dying for you. Actually you do. Because you were dead in Adam. When Adam sinned against God. You were dead in Adam. Because when Adam died, you also died. Since you were in the lens of Adam, when all of this was going on. When Adam was sent out of the Garden of Eden, you also were sent out of the Garden of Eden. Because you were in Adam when all of this was happening. So when Jesus came and died on that cross, he was dying for you to reconcile you to God, your loving Father. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is evidence that God has made contact with humanity. The resurrection of Jesus Christ if there is evidence that God's got nothing but love for you, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is evidence that Jesus is indeed the Son of the living God. Now, you can see that from the gospel we're dealing with a very practical God. God didn't just love you and leave you on your way to to hell. When God loved you, he decided to do something about it. My friend, you are on death row. You are on your way to the chair. But Jesus took the electric chair for you. Jesus took your place. He went to the cross for you. And he died for you. That's a God who decided that because he loves humanity so, so much, he was going to do something about it. You can't say you love people when you don't do anything for them. In fact, when was the last time you showed kindness to a stranger just because they are a stranger? When was the last time you showed compassion? Just because you have the opportunity to show compassion. When was the last time you did a good deed for somebody without asking for anything in return? Because you see, the world we're living in, we love the people that we know are going to love us back. We greet people that I know are going to greet us back. We invest in people that I know are going to give us something back. But is it so bad to do something for somebody just because you can? You are not, not expect anything back. Is it so good to be just compassionate and show a little bit of compassionate? And you know that a little bit of compassionate can go a, a compassion can go a very long way. You know that. You know that a couple of kind words from you can change a person's life. You know that. You know that some people just need you to be nice to them so they can breathe again. You know that. When was the last time you were compassionate? When was the last time you showed compassion? When was the last time you were nice to somebody, to a stranger, just because you can be nice? When God decided, I love humanity, he made sure he did something about it. Because God is a very practical God. He is a very practical God. In the book of James, This is what we read. 
What is it profit, my brothers? Though a man says that he has faith, but he has no works, can faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and you say to them, I wish you well, go in peace, be warm and be filled, and notwithstanding, you don't give them those things that they need for the body. What does it profit? Even so faith, if it has no works, is dead. Being alone. The reason why God sent Jesus Christ to come and down the cross is because God has faith in you. That's the reason why Jesus Christ was sent to die for you. Because God has faith in you. It's you who doesn't have faith in God. But God has faith in you. God has faith in you because when God made you, He made you in His image. God has faith in you because when God made you, He made you after His likeness. And God has faith in you because when God made you, you He gave you dominion and control over the world. It's you who doesn't have faith in God. But I can guarantee you that God has faith in you. That's why he sent Jesus. That's why Jesus came to die on that cross. Because God has faith in you. Even though God has faith in you, it is entirely up to yourself to choose to have faith in him. Or not. Thank you. God bless you. Appreciate that. Thank you. God bless you. But it's entirely up to yourself. Because our God is a God of choice. God has given you choice. So I'm here to encourage you. And if you're a young man or, or a young woman, I'm here to dare you to not only believe in Jesus Christ, but to do something about it. I dare you. If you're a teenager, I dare you to stand out. Despite what your friends will think about you, despite what your peers will think about you, I dare you. Stand up for Jesus. I dare you. Believe in Jesus, and not only believe, but do something about it. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. I tell you, because you see, a lot of young people today are controlled by what their friends think. A lot of teenagers today are in gangs, not because they want to be in gangs, but they are controlled by peer pressure. So if you are a young man, I challenge you. Believe in Jesus. Take a stand for him. Confess him publicly with your own mouth. Without apology to anybody. Believe in Jesus. Because if you have faith, but then your faith is not followed up by any works. What good is your faith? If your faith is just faith alone, but doesn't have any follow-up actions, then what good is your faith? Believe in Jesus and do something about it. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ into the very foundations of the town of Oldham. I use the voice of the blood of Jesus to call the young people of Oldham to the kingdom of God. I use the voice of the blood of Jesus to call every soul in Oldham into the family of God. I use the voice of the blood of Jesus. And I 
pulled every soul into the kingdom of God. I speak the blood of Jesus into every house in Oldham for the peace of God to reign in every house in Oldham. If you can hear me, if you're listening, if you're as you walk past, I speak the blood of Jesus into your hearing. That as you hear these words, you will hear with the hearing of faith. I speak the blood of Jesus into your spirit. Because the hour has come for the dead to hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear him shall live again. I speak the blood of Jesus into your soul. That you might come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. I use the blood of Jesus to remove from the mind of the people of Odo misconceptions about the gospel in Jesus' name. And for those that are in need of prayer, I speak the blood of Jesus Christ to you because there's power in the blood of Jesus. Regardless of what prayer you need, I speak the blood of Jesus Christ for you and the blood of Jesus Christ will deliver you. I speak the blood of the Son of God for those that are depressed and stressed out. For those that are sick in their bodies, if your health is failing you, I speak the blood of Jesus Christ to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord Jesus Christ make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.